Hey, what's up, Street Talks? This is Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. Um, so today is my 24th birthday. Yeah, I'm finally 24. Um, yeah, it was, it was nice. I woke up today with a barrage of Facebook messages saying happy birthday, which is all really nice. So, uh, to you guys who said thank you, uh, who said happy birthday, thank you guys so very much. Um, I really appreciate um, all your support and all your faith in me. And I was thinking about kind of taking this as a moment to reflect on the last six months of my life. I can't believe it's already been six months already. Roughly, for you guys who might uh, not know, roughly six months ago, I was working full time uh, doing online social media marketing at my old job and got laid off. And around the time, I was like, oh, you know, this kind of sucks. Um, you know, I guess it's time to find a new job. But really with the encouragement of my family, especially my mom and my girlfriend, Cindy, we were really able to tell me, hey, you know, why not take this love of street photography that you have and see if you can make anything, uh, something greater of it, something better out of it. And I was like, first, oh, no, you're crazy. I don't want to be homeless because, <laughs> you know, who wants to be homeless? But they really gave me so much love and support and um, really believed in me. And, you know, frankly speaking, I, I know a few people doing street photography full time, but probably not very much. It's actually Cindy calling me right now. Hello, Cindy. Hey, Cindy, I'm making a, I'm making a YouTube video right now about you. Can I call you back later? Uh-huh. This 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 conversation is actually gonna be in our video. Okay, <laughs> all right. I love you. All right, all right. Thanks for interrupting me, Cindy. This is gonna be weird because like you're gonna watch this video and you're gonna remember having this conversation. Anyways, so, um, you know, the idea of doing street photography full time. I mean, you know, looking backwards, of course, it worked out really. Uh, well, for me, I'm not homeless yet. <laughs> so, um, but at the time, you know, things were really scary. Things were very uncertain. I had no idea what things would uh, turn out to be. But I guess, you know, just, i just been incredibly lucky. Um, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, you know, Eric, that's so awesome that you're able to do what you love full time. And, I mean, granted, it is a lot of, you know, hard work that, you know, I spend uh, a lot of time, you know, working on the blog, answering emails, scheduling workshops, a lot of logistical stuff. But still, at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> a lot of it just boils down to luck. I mean, there's just been so many people um, supporting me along the way. I mean, probably the biggest thing that first started was when I got invited to Beirut, Lebanon to do the street photography workshop. And um, if it... If it wasn't for Lorraine who invited me, I mean, I wouldn't have had my first workshop experience. And especially um, each one of you guys who donated money to help support uh, my flight there. And especially to Thomas Loitard, who fronted a huge amount um, to sponsor the, the flight to work uh, to do the workshop in Lebanon. I mean, I wouldn't have got that initial spark to really start doing workshops and figure out, hey, you know, what I love to do is teach and maybe I could do this for a living. And, you know, everywhere in between, there's been so many wonderful people that have helped encourage me and, you know, give me a lot of opportunities. Um, another huge person I like to thank is uh, JJ over at Leica. He's the guy who actually invited me to the to the Leica M9P announcement in Paris. And that's, that was just a great opportunity for me to aid, meet a bunch of other Magnum photographers, um, other passionate photographers. Um, my boy Damien in Paris, who clothed and bathed me and fed me <laughs> and we were also met uh charlie kirk who's also been an extremely huge influence on uh, my photography how i see photography and probably the biggest thing is just taking my street photography more seriously and you know even the last month or two um you know a lot of my feelings about street photography have changed so much and even within the last year i mean i I'm I'm reading some stuff on my blog from like a year ago and there's some things I totally disagree with now. And I think I think that's important to always have an open mind to 
always be willing to learn new things and not always be stuck in the same method of thinking. Like, for example, a year ago, I used to think that you should never look at the street photography of anybody else because it would just influence you too much and you just end up copying their style. But something I soon realized is that, you know, inevitably you always copy off other people and it's rather copying it's you know it's getting inspiration and even if there's a photography you really really like and you tried your hardest to copy them your photo is never going to look like the other photographers and sure you know um your thoughts and your feelings are going to be influenced but i mean that's that's everything in life that's you know people that you influence uh, your friends your family around you and it's we're all social creatures and we always do borrow things from other people and you know even like nowadays i've been shooting entirely film and i used to think that film was you know something kind of cool but not something very practical um i would still say it's kind of it's kind of a burden in a sense but it's really helped me um become a lot more critical of my photography in terms of really waiting on my photos before looking at them and being more focused on projects rather than single just good images and i think that it's almost like because it's such of a burden to process and develop and this and that, I'm a lot more selective when I'm shooting, which ends up giving me better images in the end. And, you know, six, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been, I mean, I love traveling. I love, um, you know, teaching street photography, but you know, it's been, it's been really tough on me. Um, traveling nonstop the last four months or so, it's been uh, really, really, physically, mentally, and emotionally draining as well. I mean, uh, I've been going to Asia a lot, and I love Asia, but the 15-hour fl flights plus connecting flights do get pretty exhausting, <laughs> and getting used to the different time zones, and you know, other stuff like missing my friends and family back home, um, especially missing Cindy. Um, these are some of the things that um, I really, I really miss a lot, but at the same time, you know, being able to travel, it's one of my huge loves, and being able to meet so many wonderful people around the world who have really helped me uh, in my personal journey, and, you know, I have, I have no idea what lies in the next six months or so, because, you know, who knows, maybe, hope, you know, knock on wood that I break my leg and I can't do street photography anymore, or for some reason, um, street photography gets totally outlawed and all across the world and I got to find a new profession or a new career but you know something I'm starting to consider nowadays a little bit more too is um, you know maybe even going back to school and studying you know, either photography or sociology and becoming just uh, you know getting my PhD even becoming a full-time uh, photographer uh, photography teacher slash sociologist slash I don't know something I've, I was, I've been teaching my um, online street photography course at UC Riverside Extension, and it's it's really been a huge pleasure, um, you know, teaching, I guess, a more standardized uh, university level course, something that um, I really, I really enjoy doing. And, you know, but at the same time, at the end of the day, I think that where my heart really lies is, you know, being a teacher. And it's always something I've had such a huge passion for doing, but, you know, Growing up, you know, typical stereotypical Asian guys like my, my mom, and my dad were like, okay, you're either gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or a businessman or something. You know, everything is out of the question. I'm like, I want to be a teacher. They're like, there's no money in teaching. You know, <laughs> forget about it. Um, but I I realize it's what I I truly love, and I mean, for anybody else out there, you know, I know a lot of people out there have full time jobs that they may or may not really enjoy, and you know kind of have a tough time doing the the nine to five grind and um you know i i my people ask me so how do you do what you do i mean i think a lot of it yeah is that you just kind of need a kick in the ass i mean if i would if i didn't get laid off my old job as the company downsizing i really thought i would have had the real determination to just leave my steady job and leave my health care leave my you know all these benefits that i had and you know my one of my good friends uh Rinzi ruiz I mean, this guy worked at Technicolor as a uh, as a managing art director for like ten years, and you know he recently got laid off too, and he started loathing his job, and because he got laid off, I mean, he, it looks like he's enjoying his life a lot more, and I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I mean, people always tell me, 
that do what you love and everything else will follow. And I was thought it was such a huge cliche. I'm like, you know, that's a bunch of crap. You know, I don't, I heard that a million times. I don't believe in it, but you know, now sitting where I am sitting, you know, it is, it is, um, such a cliche, but it really is doing what you do. I love doing, and I feel more alive than ever. And even though I'm probably at least three or four times more busy than my old job, it's, you know, I do what I love and it doesn't feel like work. Sometimes it does feel like work, but other than that, um, I really, I really love it. Um, there's so many people I would like to thank. Um, hopefully, below, I'm going to uh, spell out a few more people that uh, I would like to thank because I think the list would keep going on and on and on for the people I like to thank. But um, probably the biggest person I would like to thank is my mom, Amma. Um, I love you so much and thank you so much for um, really believing me and supporting me. Um, you know, my, my mom, she she had a really tough life. She, you know, it took her working like two or three part-time jobs just to get my ass through school and um, really helping me um, in my personal journey. And, you know, one of my personal goals is to, um, now that she's helped me out so much, is to help her out. Um, you know, and of course, last but not least, um, all of you guys, I mean, you guys are what makes this blog alive. I mean, it's, I always try to say it's all about the community and it really is. I mean, without the community, it's just this random dude just typing away his keyboard. Um, you know, thanks for supporting me by coming to my workshops, for sharing my links with your friends. Thank you for <clears throat> just giving me encouragement when I might doubt myself or, you know, just just giving me a smile and giving me good feedback or even criticizing me. These are all the things that I need to um, further develop. Thank you for also listening to this now 12 minute video. It's it's pretty long, <laughs> but um, hopefully a lot of good things uh, to be held in store for, um, you know, myself for street photography in general. I think that street photography is really starting to pick up nowadays and um, hopefully I could still, you know, really put all my energy and just um, supporting as much as I can with this uh, this community and just extending my passion for street photography and um, continue to further my thinking. Um, yeah, lots of lots of good things to come. And last but not least, if you want to wish me a happy birthday, this is my shameless plug. If you could buy me some film, that would be awesome. Um, I've been I've been shooting a lot of Portrait Four Hundred lately. I'm I'm actually working on a a color project shooting in Los Angeles and having seen a lot of Martin Parr and Alex Webb I I might I see myself maybe taking a shift to color um, either Portrait 400 or Tri-X 400 um, shooting film isn't cheap <laughs> but if I could theoretically have a, a lifetime supply of film um, or at least um, enough to last me a year maybe every birthday I'm like just give me film you know you want presents just give me film like that'd be that'd be such a, a wonderful uh, thank you gift to me um so yeah it's i'm gonna go out meet uh, shoot some street photography today maybe take the day off and um hopefully have a good birthday <laughs> all right thanks again so much guys i love you guys peace